The NHL rookie crop this year has been absolutely spectacular. There's players that have been rising above my expectations, but there's also been quite a few duds so far too. But out of the most popular rookies this year in Bedard, Fantilli, Carlson, Hughes, Mintyukov, Levi, and more, who have been the most impressive and who have been the least impressive? Well, we're going to be grading every major rookie in the NHL this year to see who has been the best and the worst. So make sure you watch till the end for every single grade and hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey content just like this all throughout the year. Folks, we got so much content on the prospect side of things with prospect pool rankings, draft rankings, for 2024 a lot is going to be happening soon that you won't want to miss but of course let's get the grade started today with the most exceptional rookie so far in Connor Bedard of the Chicago Blackhawks it's actually interesting because he started off kind of at a decent rate but he has really started to get going since the turn of November started and he's now the highest scoring rookie when we look at things with Connor Bedard of course as the first overall pick there were some lofty expectations coming into this year but I think so far he has absolutely met them in 14 games, got nine goals, four assists for 13 points, and has been about as expected to me. Especially early on with Bedard, I thought we'd see him really play well in the first few months, and we've seen that that goal scoring, especially over the last couple of weeks, has finally started to show itself that unreal Connor Bedard shot. It's trademarked for a reason, folks. You also have to appreciate out of his nine goals, eight of them are at even strength. And on top of that, 11 of his 13 points are also at even strength too. He could be a lot better on the power play. And that's the biggest thing for me. Even strength wise, he has been the best rookie. He has been one of the best players in the NHL. And once his power play abilities start going, it's going to be nasty. And for a great for Connor Bernard's rookie season so far, I'm going to give him a straight A. Sure, again, there have been some defensive lapses, but he's been about as expected and He's been leading Chicago in so many ways, which is great to see so early. But now let's go on to the other notable rookie on the Chicago Blackhawks this year in Kevin Korchinski, who, unlike Bedard, wasn't a sure bet to be on this roster, but in training camp, seized that opportunity and so far has gone top four minutes. Of course, as the seventh overall pick back in 2022, you'd want to see him take that next step, but Chicago, I think, has played him pretty perfectly. As an offensive D, they've sheltered him of great power play minutes, good offensive minutes as well, and that's, at 19 years old at least, what they should be doing with Korchinski. And I would say he's been decent in that role. In 14 games, he has one goal, four assists, five points. I think as the quarterback of that power play, though, could be doing a much better job, at least with the offensive gifts that he has in his tool set. But still, production for a 19-year-old defenseman, it's not bad. But considering Kevin Korchinski's age, not even turning 20 until likely, Chicago's season is completely over in June. I still think he's done pretty solidly. Nothing that's going to blow your mind or anything, but I'm going to give him a B-. Now let's move on to another superstar rookie in the Central Division. Next up, let's go on to the player second in rookie scoring this year in Logan Cooley, who has been pretty incredible in a playmaking role with the Arizona Coyotes. Another player kind of like Leo Carlson, Connor Bedard, has been given as much opportunity as humanly possible possible and he's run away with it. you can see as the third overall pick back in 2022 as just a 19 year old you can see what he's been able to do with arizona this year two goals 10 assists 12 points in 16 games and offensively logan cooley has been one of the best errors in a coyote he's one of the best rookies in the nhl right now but the creativity he has the speed he has and the quickness there it's been all so much fun to watch and although logan cooley has been brilliant on the power play and at special teams his five on five play has left a little bit to be desired you can see out of his 12 points three are at even strength he has nine power play points which isn't a bad thing necessarily you want to see a young player working well in the power play but the fact that his five on five production has kind of paled in comparison lessens him a little bit for me and for logan cooley able to keep him away from an a plus grade as well i'm going to give him an a minus so far certainly good and about where i expected him to be in his overall game but still i think there is a lot of room to improve now let's move on to a defenseman here and one of the best rookie defensemen this year going on to the new jersey devils in luke hughes and here's the most important thing for me. He looks like he's getting better and better every game while players like Jack Hughes and Nico Hishier are out. He's still continuing to get points on a disastrous Devils team right now. And you can see in 15 games as a 20-year-old D, he has one goal and nine assists for 10 points. But honestly, the biggest thing for me with Hughes is how his overall game is actually looking a lot better than I thought it would. And going back to the rookie expected goals against per 60 numbers, most of the time rookies aren't going to be putting up the greatest defensive numbers. But you see Luke Hughes in the top 20 of expected goals against per 60. He has actually been 
pretty good defensively. With Luke Hughes, I'm going to give his grade a straight A. Honestly, is close to being an A+. Plus. He has been fantastic, and if you made a top three in the Calder race right now, he could probably be in the top three. Next up, going on to another great offensive rookie here, we got Adam Fantilli of the Columbus Blue Jackets, who, of course, was drafted third overall by CBJ in this last draft, and has looked pretty good. You can see Fantilli stole nine points, four goals in 17 games. But to me, he's been Columbus's best forward. Day in and day out, he has looked brilliant and honestly could be in the 10s range for sure. He has been great and offensively has been one of their best. There is still a lot to improve, but I'm going to give Fantilli an A-. minus. So far, he's been about as expected. Next up, let's go on to Adam Fantilli's line mate, though, and a player that might be the most, no, is the most underrated rookie in the NHL right now in Dimitri Baranka. He was a 23-year-old fourth-round pick by the Blue Jackets back in the 2019 draft. You can see 6'5", 240 pounds. This is a beast right here. And he's playing like it, too. You can see in 11 games so far this year, he got two goals, six assists for eight points, has been a brilliant offensive and physical force for this Blue Jackets team. You can see in terms of point per game right now, he is tied with Leo Carlson with a 0.73, which is pretty incredible. You also look at it, too, in the even strength points. He's tied fourth, has seven points out of his eight points. Seven of them are on even strength. He has been a five-on-five -five stud so far. And in terms of expected goals for per 60 at 5-on-5, five five, Dmitry Vorankov is first among rookies with a 4.23. Nobody is even at a 3.5. Vorankov has been ahead of the pack and has been one of the best offensive rookies this year. But you look at the entire NHL in terms of rookie time on ice, and you see Dmitry Vorankov is 43rd among rookies. I don't know why the Blue Jackets aren't playing him more, because not only has he been one of their best players, he's been one of the best rookies and best offensive players so far. And again, these rankings and grades are based off my prior expectations. I thought Vorankov was going to be a really interesting player after his great last couple of KHL seasons, but I didn't see it happening this early. I give Vorankov an A+. He has been exceptional. Next up, let's go on to the trio of Anaheim Ducks rookies and starting us off with Leo Carlson, who has been a great revelation for Anaheim so far. Playing on that first line as a center, Leo Carlson has been brilliant and offensively has been as advertised. And his goal scoring has been great too. Six goals, eight points in 11 games. For an 18-year-old center, sure, has he been crappy in face-offs? Yeah, he has like a 22% or something. Yeah, he's not been great defensively. But Leo Carlson, for what he's been able to show in those shelter minutes, has been good. And I think that's all you can really ask for. I'm going to give him a straight A. Next up, going on to one of my boys here on the defensive side for Anaheim in Pavel Mintyukov, who has been a revelation as well for this Anaheim Ducks team. I thought I was always pretty high on Mintyukov, but I guess I wasn't high enough because I didn't expect him to be in the NHL this year. At 19 years old, he's been one of the better defensemen in the entire NHL this year. In 16 games, is one goal, nine assists, 10 points. Defensively, though, is where Mintyukov has really shown through. That maturity in the OHL that we all saw, he has been able to translate that perfectly on the NHL game. The anticipation, the quickness with him, he is so good at anticipating play, and it's been a real massive strength for Anaheim this year. I gotta give Mintuk of an A+. Plus. There's no ifs and buts about it. And then going on to their main rookie goaltender in Lucas Dostal, who at 23 years old has been solid so far. He got the no, uh, October Rookie of the Month. Since then, hasn't been as good. He gotten, he's now at an 893 save percentage, which is so sad to see. I'm gonna give him a B-. minus. But let's keep going through the goaltenders here. Next up, we go to the Buffalo Sabres in Devon Levi. Now, Here's the thing. I didn't have the greatest expectations for Levi heading into this year. I didn't have him in my top three Calder voting. So far, that's looking like the right choice. At 21 years old, he's been okay, but you can see in seven games, this is an 881 save percentage, a 3-4 low win to loss ratio. He has been fine, but not the revelation that Buffalo needed him to be. It's very hard to make that transition to a full NHL season, and it seems like Levi, especially with the backups he's had to have and the injuries he's had so far, has not had the greatest success. We all know Levi will be the face of that net in Buffalo at some point, but we'll see if it is this year. Still though, he's about the same range in my expectations, but I'm going to give him a straight D. Now let's go on to a Nashville Predators prospect that I thought was going to have a really solid year. It started off quite slow, but has gotten off to a much better start in November. And that is Luke Evangelista of the Nashville Predators, a player that I had top three in my Calder voting. I thought it was a really big dark horse. And so far, he's been solid as a second round pick back in 2020. You can see 15 games, one goal, eight assists for nine points. 
playmaking wise he has been brilliant for nashville but he's still shown some amazing moments here and there and i think he's getting better and better i think most people would probably give evangelista a higher grade because they weren't expecting much but i was obviously expecting a lot putting him inside my top three still though i'm gonna give him a b plus he's been good so far but now let's move on to the minnesota wild and their pair of rookies who have been brilliant so far this year let's start out with marco rossi who i'm just loving the resurgence of playing those first line minutes earning those first line minutes he has been great in that role and it's great to start to see him finally realize that potential he had back in his draft year and you can see in 15 games he has five goals three assists for eight points so i'm gonna give rossi an a minus so far but i definitely think there could be even more finishing on top of this i think we could see him get more and more points as the season goes on but let's go on to a wild rookie who has been one of the best defensive players in the entire league this year in brock Faber. As a 21 year old in 15 games, he has one goal, five assists for six points. Could honestly have more point production, but really that's not the be all end all with him. You can see among all rookies and expected goals against per 60 at five on five, Brock Faber is the seventh best defensively. He has been an absolute beast, but considering the amount of minutes he's been given, the amount of opportunity, the fact that he has been this elite and dominant defensively deserves all the praise in the world. He's probably not going to get the love or the adoration that players like Luke Hughes and Palomar Tukov will get, but dang it, Brock Faber has been brilliant for this Minnesota Wild team. I got to give him an A+. Plus. He has been exceptional. Let's keep going through these rookies here, and next up, let's go on to the Toronto Maple Leafs and one of their better offensive players in Matthew Nyes, who has been solid so far this year. In a minute about that top 10 range of the rookie class, which was to be expected, you can see this year in 15 games is four goals four assists for eight points he's been solid a good physical force been great on that middle six too and to be about as expected i'm gonna give him a straight b now let's move on to another matthew here and a matthew that has been exceptional as well this time for the boston bruins let's move on to matthew Petra who has been unreal but i mean Poitra has been insane this year compared to my expectations i never saw him being in the nhl this season but you can see what he's been able to do 15 games four goals four assists for eight points he's so smart though so quick on pucks and that determination has really created such a great environment for him already he's already looking like one of the best c's on the bruins one of the best players on the bruins you got to give him an a plus he came out of nowhere but credit to him he's been unreal but now let's go on to one of my favorites back in the 2019 NHL draft. Feels like forever, but that's Bobby Brink of the Philadelphia Flyers. And at 22 years old so far, he's been solid for Philly. In 13 games, has three goals, five assists for eight points, and has been that great force, that great forward checking player that I thought he can be, that solid physicality, and really getting past that weak skating. He's been improving ever so slightly. And I'm going to give him a B plus for Philly, looking like a solid second line player for the future. Next up, going on to an Ottawa Senator here that I did not expect to do as good as he was doing. Unfortunately, ran into injury issues, but that is Wrigley Greg of the Ottawa Senators. It's kind of sad to see how this season went for him, especially with how well it started. You can see in his first nine games, got two goals, five assists for seven points. Unfortunately, again, those injuries came, and for Ottawa, he's been a pretty big loss, especially, of course, not having Shane Pinto. And yeah, B plus for Greg. Once he gets back, I think he'll be a great addition to this Sens line. But now let's go to the Calgary Flames, who have a couple of really interesting rookies. The one that has been much better, though, has been Connor Zary, who has really burst onto the scene with this Flames team. At 22 years old, of course, was the 24th overall pick back in 2020, but this year has been a monster. I mean, he got 10 points in six AHL games, then has come onto this Flames team and has gotten six points in seven games, three goals, three assists. They've needed some youth to really carry the momentum. Zary has filled the bill. He has been exactly as advertised if not better i would say so it, for just that i'm gonna give him a straight a now let's go on to the second flames rookie and honestly one of the more disappointing guys in this class and that is matt coronado who came onto this flames roster basically getting a top six role and didn't really do much with it another first round pick by the flames 13th overall back in 2021 you can see in 10 games he had one goal one assist two points was a disaster defensively and really didn't look home in the nhl level it didn't really feel like he fit in the nhl and I gotta give him an F. He definitely was looking a lot better than what we saw in his first 10 games. Let's go on to the last couple of rookies to mention here today, and let's go on to the last couple of goalies here. First up is Joseph Wool of the Toronto Maple Leafs, who has been pretty solid, and I thought he would be pretty solid this year. I thought he would be in a great position, but has already taken Ilya Samsonov's spot, which isn't necessarily necessarily hard with how Samsonov has played, but still, at Wool at age 25 has been good. A 908 save percentage, one of the better goalies in terms of goals they have expected. He's been a solid starter so far with Toronto, which can Considering his age is all you can really ask for. I'm going to give Joseph Will a straight A. So far, he's been the goaltender that Toronto has needed. Let's go on to a player, though, that definitely has been a lot more disappointing to me, and that has been Joel Hoffer. Now, he got absolutely lit up by the Sharks, was looking a lot better before that game, but I thought he was going to come in and steal Jordan Bennington's job, but Bennington has come out blazing this year 
in a big way for St. Louis. Still, though, Joel Hoffer at 23 years old, still, and it was one of the better save percentages in terms of goal, uh, rookie goaltenders this year, but a 902 save percentage in five games. Still okay in terms of goals, state above expected, about average. But to me with Hoffer, I expected him to be a lot better, to be one of the best rookies this year. That hasn't quite happened. I'm going to give him a C plus, though. Still has had a few games where he's looked pretty good. But those are my rookie grades so far through the 2024 NHL season. Let us know down below. What do you guys agree with? What do you guys disagree with? And what would you grade your favorite team's rookies and the rookies in this video as well? Let us know all your thoughts down below. Of course, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell if you enjoyed today's video. And of course, share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online. Look at this card as well for my Hockey Prospects talk right in one playlist. A lot of content to binge there. And I will see you in the next one. This was such a fun video to put together. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.